Ladies and gentlemen, dear traders, I'm sitting here and I'm absolutely fuming because I just read the CFTC report regarding the scandal around my Forex funds, the prop firm. Uh, we will go through this report and we're going to discuss some big, big topics in this video. So please watch it carefully if you are involved in Forex. And I apologize in advance because I'm going to get angry. <laughs> I'm telling you right now in this video, I'm going to lose it, I think, because as many of you know, I have dedicated my appearance here, my project on the internet in order to defend the interests of us traders. Okay. Think of me as representing us traders on the buy side. And as you know, my focus has been the actual market manipulation of the big boys. I'm one of the very, very few people who exposed that in front of your eyes and probably the only one who was able to expose all that in front of your eyes by actually showing you objective information rather than anything else. And we're going to come to that in another video. But I've done more. The ones who follow my work from the very beginning, they know I really try to clean up the industry. I went even after Forex scammers, which is one of the reasons why my channel is still small, I think. Um, I showed you how brokers engage in all kinds of questionable, if not illegal activities to trade against the clients. I've exposed salesmen and marketers who just want to sell you their indicators and, and tools and EAs, which do not work in the end. So in a nutshell, I have a tra track record here publicly for doing all these kinds of things. Now, my focus always is the actual market. Why does Euro dollar go up and down? Um, I was able to expose that kind of market manipulation and it will stay my focus. And I tell you something, you will see a lot of new content from my side. I have some things in preparation and you will be surprised. I just tell you, get your popcorn out, lean back and watch what I will show you within the next weeks. Because I'm telling you guys, I'm going for it because I had it. I had it. And I'm switching into attack mode. Jamal is getting into a new stage of, I'm getting into an attack mode. And this scandal here shows you a lot of things which are still very, very relevant today. Many things apply also to brokers and we're going to come to that. And in all fairness, yes, I mean, I will explain to you in a second what the overall uh, legal standpoint is, what's going on. And there are some principles such as innocent until proven guilty and so on. But the evidence which was placed on the table by the CFTC is striking already. And you can see that what the regulators did, they did a very, very intense investigation, probably over a year. And I'm sure that my Forex funds is just the first firm which will which was subject to that uh, investigation. I'm sure within the next weeks, we're going to see other cases. So stay tuned. And this gentleman here who gave like an interview to Kimmel Trading a year ago, actually is the CEO of my Forex one, believe it or not, Mr. Mutuza Kasmi. And it's shocking to see what this man did and what he engaged in and it's it's just shocking to see also how he communicated to the public on the internet here in this particular podcast and regarding these people who are kind of giving others a platform i mean look kimmel trading you seem like a really nice guy but please understand guys all right be skeptical and be selective if somebody offers you to promote something or offers you some marketing budget or, you know, uh, some, some discount codes, whatever. Do not, you know, jump to it and say, yeah, yeah, let's do this just to earn a penny. Okay. Be skeptical guys. Seriously. Stop uh, falling to the feet of anyone who offers you some money. Anyways, let's, you know, let's start all this with some comments from 
the man himself. Then we're going to go into the CTFC report. And then I will express some comments from my side. Let's get started. With the funding talent scandal, there is a lot of people being cautious into, okay, so do I really want to enter in my Forex fund, which is maybe not that reputable. They've been only around for one and a half years. And then you have FTMO that's been around for five years. So what do you think that should make people feel confident with joining my Forex funds? Like if people come to me and say, oh, I don't know, like I would rather go for FTMO because it's not that reputable by my Forex funds. They haven't proven themselves and funding talent just, mm -hmm. just left. What would you say to those people as to, okay, you can trust us? Uh, number one thing is, you know, uh, and we have been talking about this as well, a little bit offline. We are people that are, my background is technology. And then one of my head guys, his background is trading or markets, right? So, and then we have operational managers. So we look at it as a business that we want to take for on long-term basis. Uh, other companies, they took it more of a social experiment slash, you know, gamifying. I, I don't even know at the end what it was, right? They changed their story so many times. Uh, and again, they may have a good reason. They may have a good model. I see you uh, about that, buddy. In March buddy. or April, they even came out saying, you know, everyone is doing that. No one's trading the life funds into that. We, you know, we took a, at that time, we were with a different broker. We took, I talked to the CEO, they sent us a letter and we published it saying, hey, we have life capital there. And we are actually trading with that uh, registered entity at that time. So it's all about business models. Their business model wasn't the same as ours. Uh, you know, and again, FTMO has been around for five, six, seven years, or whatever it has been. So the model works as long as you can execute it properly. Again, just like trading, right? If yeah. you have something, it, you still have to execute it. If you don't execute it, you'll fail. So some of us are doing- Oh, uh, really? You have to execute that. Let's talk about what happened here. So guys, Understand the following, okay? There is no court verdict yet. There will be in the future, and I try to update you on that. So we have to be fair, and once uh, this whole uh, process has been finalized and there is a prosecution and all that, then we know what the judge confirmed in the end, okay? So keep that in the back of your head. However, it's obvious that this lawsuit was very well prepared. They first collected evidence and they did not even notify my Forex funds what they're going to do. So now their assets are frozen already and we're going to see what the judge says. And I am very confident that my Forex fund, and that's my personal opinion only, will not survive this scandal. We're talking straight out fraud here. All right. Let's call it spade a spade. And I didn't expect that before I read this report today. I thought maybe it's more like a conflict of interest, but no, 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 no. What we're talking about here is another level and we're gonna go through this. And please understand I'm independent, all right? I'm not connected to any prop firm or broker um, or bank or hedge fund or whatever, yeah? I, my project is still independent. That's an important point. And as you can see, even if you are a YouTuber or podcaster, be selective, all right? Do not just engage or give people a platform because they have a big logo or big name, okay? And also be skeptical. It can't be that you just say, oh yeah, this guy seems fine. You know, we're just gonna give him a platform and interview and whatnot. So let's get started. Motuza Kasmi engaged and continued to engage in large-scale fraud scheme involving leveraged margin of finance retail foreign exchange and retail commodity transactions in violation of the Commodity Exchange Act, Traders Global doing business as my forex funds and acting through its principals, agents and employees, including defendant Kasmi, offers retail customers the opportunity to become 
professional traders. Using Trader Global's money to trade against third-party liquidity providers and sharing in any trading profits. In return for the opportunity, customers pay certain fees to Traders Global and are required by Traders Global to maintain a certain minimum amount of account equity, referred to as drawdown limit. Trading Global assures customers that your success is our business and we only make money when you do. And <laughs> we're going to see about that. What's, what's the reality here? Okay. And look what CFTC says. I mean, it can't be more clear. Trader, Traders Global is a fraud. In reality, Traders Global is not a third-party liquidity provider. It's a counterparty to substantially all customer trades. And over 135,000 clients signed up for that. And they paid the fees, so the challenge fees, in, the, in a total of $310 million. We are talking big money here, guys. This is not just, you know, a little, a little scam or whatever. Traders Global does not, therefore, make money when customers make money. Traders Global loses money when customers make money. So we have a complete conflict of interest here. And this is just the beginning. I'm telling you, we're going to go into detail now and you will be shocked. Traders Global pays customers who trade successfully, but substantially all of the payments come from fees paid by other customers in a manner similar to a Ponzi scheme and not from the proceeds of profitable trading against security providers. So understand that, yeah? And I've said it in the last video. How do these seeding firms actually make money? Well, the main income are those fees that charge you for engaging in these valuation phases with the hope of getting their live accounts and uh, and a profit cut later on okay so that already tells you that their incentive is to make as many fees as possible they come with their arbitrary values like you can't lose more than let's say 10 percent or whatever it is and you're going to lose your uh, fee and um, that's already not a good thing of course because it gives an incentive to that prop firm to find ways to make you lose that fee you pay and in the best case to again pay them another fee for uh, engaging in a second challenge okay in the hope of um, achieving a new um, funded account and allow me to explain a few things here i'm not that naive of course there may be brokers who had an interest in let's say um, going against uh, these new prop firms because you have to understand in the last years uh, many prop firms out of nowhere came to the market and experienced explosive growth and this took a lot of business away from brokers which existed beforehand so i have not any insider information here or anything but i could imagine just speculating that of course there are parties who are interested in those prop firms getting a big hit however in this particular case here we talk about real fraud on behalf of that prop firm my forex funds and its sole shareholder whom we just saw before we are talking straight fraud here ladies and gentlemen because uh, you're going to be shocked all the things we're going to read now and um let's go through it okay in order for traders global to generate profit traders global has to collect more in fees than it pays to successful customers because obviously like the traders who are profitable the few of them uh, they want their, their payouts. So that is the money which the prop firm pays out, whereas they collect the fees. But as you will see, the money they earned for in terms of those uh, challenge fees is way higher. In order to do this, Traders Global uses various devices to minimize the likelihood of profitable trading by customers and reduce the amount of profits Traders Global has to pay successful customers. These devices include using a drawdown limit as a bad faith pretext to terminate customer accounts, as I explained just now, misleadingly assessing Trader Global's own commissions to reduce customer account equity, secretly using specialized software to stack the odds against customers by delaying execution of customer orders or executing the orders at worse prices than uh, appeared to the customers, so slippage. I mean, what does that remind you of? Yes, bucket shops, okay? We had th so many bucket shops like 10 years ago, those retail brokers, and that's what they did. And now we have the same thing with those new prop firms 
and of course, I mean, this is not new information. In fact, I have shown you that stuff before. Remember, I made this video here a long time ago where you can actually see the different parties in the Forex market. And here we can add prop firms now, yeah? Brokers, retail brokers, white labels, etc. So semi-smart money, people who, who make money by facilitating trades. But here we talk about um, a dynamic where the prop firm, my Forex funds, engaged in practices which were known before to be implemented by bucket shops, okay? By those retail brokers. And thankfully, within the last 10 years, the regulators have done more against them and they're slightly improved. Now we see all the stuff happening again. So specialized software, that means, ladies and gentlemen, understand that, that those companies here, they manipulated the slippage against the client it's not random that sometimes you win a bit of slippage and sometimes you lose they had an algo which made sure that overall the clients lose on the slippage and that's the money which they pocket on top and the requotes yeah you see delaying of custom orders they you click on buy and it doesn't fill you and it waits and it goes against you like taking little cuts of your uh, p l all the time but this is just the beginning again Sending orders from an extremely small number of successful traders to an overseas counterparty, then using specialized software to artificially increase the distance between the best bid or offer. So now it's getting darker. The few traders which are profitable, like our guys, our causality traders, yeah, they put them on a different trading book overseas. And what do they do? They even fight more against them, so to speak, by even uh, manipulating the spread against them in a more aggressive manner. Defendant's scheme is profitable. During the relevant period, Traders Global had net income of approximately $172 million. Kasmi used proceeds from the fraud to purchase luxury homes and automobiles and make tens of millions of dollars in transfers to his personal accounts. Defendant's fraud scheme violates regulation, which prohibits fraud in connection with leveraged retail and forex transactions by acting as a counterparty to its customer trades. Traders Global, Traders Global is violating regulation. Defendant Mutusa Kasmi is the CEO and sole shareholder of Traders Global US and Traders Global Canada. Coffeezilla, it's time for you to make a video on this. If you see that, probably you have done it already, I guess. Please go for it, okay? I cannot do everything on my own, all right? I want to really focus on the market manipulation. I can't, you know, also fight all the scammers and, you know, all the wrongdoings in this industry. I can't. I, I can, I can, I, I'm more than happy to make videos like this here. But uh, my focus, generally speaking, is different. So please, okay, uh, look into this case and, and talk about it and make it public, all right? We all need to do that. Otherwise, this industry doesn't get better. And I really, really want to make the Forex industry better. I already did a lot in the last years, okay? But um, of course, when something significant like this here happens, I have to sit down and, and expose that also. According to Traders Global, a customer can use Traders Global's own live trading funds to trade these contracts against third-party liquidity providers. Representative customer trading is probably the customer is entitled to receive as much as 85% of the profits. In order for a customer to take advantage of this opportunity, a customer is required to sign up for an account with Traders Global and pay registration fee between $49 and $4,900, depending on the type of account the customer signs up for. Okay, so that's the very common structure we see on the in those prop firms, which as such, okay, as long as you know the rules are followed and people get their payouts and uh, you know the the fees are fair okay fair enough but here we talk about a situation where traders global traded against their own clients manipulated the spread and slippage and records against the clients move successful traders on another book and it gets worse it gets worse it's not not everything and we're talking Forex here as well, yeah? So Euro, Dollar, EG, not like other markets. A customer who signs up for an account is required to stay within a drawdown limit imposed by Traders Global. The drawdown limit requires a customer to maintain a certain minimum amount of equity in his or her trading account. So as I've always had the feeling also, these drawdown limits, I mean, what's the story here? And basically, they try to get you kicked out so that they can collect your fee and earn from you another fee if you sign up for the next account. That's basically it. 
Here, and, and that's the YouTube video we just saw shortly. In a December 21 YouTube video, Kasmi explained that the drawdown is designed to force traders to get into the habit of locking in some of the profits. If you lose all that money, Kasmi explains, it's not only you that's losing, it's us as well, right? Because we want to make you profitable so we can be profitable. So he is basically misrepresenting here how this works. He tries to give the impression that it would be in the interest of my Forex funds if traders would actually make money. It's a complete lie. And I'm not, I'm sure he will not get away with that. And it gets much worse. Your success is our business trader global pr proclaims on its website. We only make money if you make money. No, that's not the case. It's quite the opposite. It's traders that make us at the end of the day. It's traders that trading that make us money. And what's the reality? Traders Global sales pitch has been extremely appealing to customers. During the relevant period, more than 135,000 customers signed up for their accounts with Traders Global. More than 111,000 of these customers had demo accounts and more than 24,000 had live accounts during the relevant period. In aggregate, these more than 135,000 customers paid Traders Global more than $310 million in fees. Can you imagine that? So what's going on? You can see that when you do those uh, challenges and they give you that account where you have to achieve certain performance parameters, that's actually a demo account. It's not a real account. And look at this clear statement from the S uh, CFTC. And I'm going to post a link to this uh, document in the description, of course. So you can look at this document yourself. I will go here through selected uh, paragraphs only. Traders Global is a fraud. In reality, Traders Global is the counterparty to substantially all customer trades. When customers win, Trader Global loses. Okay? Customers do not trade live funds against multiple liquidity providers, nor do customers share in trading profits as Traders Global claims. In reality, customers trade against Traders Global in an electronic trading environment that Traders Global controls. In a manner similar to a Ponzi scheme, when customers win, Traders Global loses. So a complete conflict of interest and they exploit that by conducting unfair practices. As if trading is not difficult enough, they are making this game so unfair. And I, I really react to this with, with anger. I mean, I'm allergic against action like that. And they're going to get their karma, I promise you that. In fact, Traders Global is not charged commissions by any third party on trades for which it's acts as counterparty. And you understand? So they charged the commissions, even though these trades were not uh, given to a liquidity provider. They still pocketed the commission for those trades. You understand? The so-called commissions are simply a charge against customer account equity imposed by Traders Global. By assessing these commissions, Traders Global is able to reduce the profitability of successful customer trades as well as the amount of money Traders Global has to pay the customer in profits. For unsuccessful customers, the commissions move them closer to and in some cases over the drawdown limit, which allows Traders Global to disable the account and pocket the fee and uh, ask for a new fee if the trader wants another account. Traders Global uses specialized software. Okay, whenever you see that word in connection with trading, okay, pay attention. We're talking about an algo which is used against clients here, okay? And we're not talking about the smart money algos which are, you know, market making and moving forex prices around. These are attempts to manipulate um, the spread and slippage against the client, okay? But still, this is significant. Anyone who has tested a uh, a short-term strategy knows how significant the actual spreads and transaction costs are for a trading strategy. So if they take money away from you that way, uh, you can imagine what the actual consequence of that is. Any strategy is highly sensitive to these kind of factors. Okay, Traders Global uses specialized software to automatically add delay or slippage to customer orders. Traders Global does this in order to reduce the likelihood or amount of a customer's profitable trading. I mean, these are very, very clear statements from the regulator. And I'll tell you something. There's going to be other prop firms which are peeing their pants right now because I'm sure this is not the only case. 
The delay parameter allows traders global to delay execution of the customer's order for a specified period of time. Traders global does this to prevent customers from taking advantage of arbitrage opportunities arising from pricing differences among related markets. And uh, they're going to show us the internal communication of Traders Global regarding them hunting clients who use those kind of strategies. Traders Global subjects most of its customers to some amount of delay or slippage. Customers whose trading generates consistent profits, however, are subject to longer delays and increased slippage implemented by Traders Global. So they are looking for the ones who are profitable and then going after them in an even more aggressive manner. Traders Global does not disclose to customers that it uses the specialized software to impose delay or slippage on their trading. Their orders uh, are sent to an overseas dealer and imposes an additional spread for the successful customers. A very small number of customers trading live accounts manage to trade profitably despite Traders Global's attempts to handicap them. After identifying such customers, Traders Global may route some or all of these customer orders to an off-exchange leveraged forex and commodities dealer outside of the US. They, refuse, they refer to that as STPing a customer's account, stands for straight through processing. I mean, and, and look at that. Of 24,000 customers with live accounts this, during the period, fewer than 100 of them had a single trade STB. Can you imagine? So here you see again the numbers we see in Forex in general. Okay, we have a majority of losers, a very small amount of winners. And what makes me so angry here is that these unfair companies exploit um, their ability to trade against the clients and to give them slippage and weak quotes. It is just horrible. Traders Global does not expect customers on STP to trade profitably. Indeed, they do not. Customers on STP do sustain substantially worse than when Traders Global was their counterparty. More than 70% of the customers on STP made less money than before when they were trading unbeknownst to them against Traders Global. Many of these customers went profitable against uh, Traders Global to unprofitable on STP, you understand? So the ones who traded well, like our guys, our causality traders, okay, who understand how the market works, who have the MK web, who defend themselves against uh, position runs and stop runs and all that, who, who took time out of their life to learn how trading works, they are subject to that fraud. It's straight up fraud, okay? They put, they put them on a different trading book and they try to also make these guys unprofitable with very, very unfair, unethical, illegal action, okay? Shame! on your traders global shame on you it's shocking and you deserve to be punished as an example i tell you that if a customer trades profitably against traders global traders global's potential losses are unlimited when a customer trades profitably against the dealer via sdp customer profits come out of the dealer's pocket but losses are limited by Traders Global Drawdown Limit, which automatically disables the customer's account when the limit is reached. For customers on STP, Traders Global uses its specialized software to impose an additional spread on the price feed visible to STP customers. This spread results in a customer seeing and believing himself or herself to be executed at a worse price than what Traders Global got from the dealer. It allows Traders Global to give less money to a winning customer and for a losing customer. Defendant's scheme is a profitable one during the relevant period. Traders Global took in approximately $310 million in customer registration fees. During the same period, Traders Global paid out approximately $137 million, mostly by customers in the form of perpetual trading profits. Traders Global has thus achieved a net income of $172 million from its fraud during the relevant period. You understand? So after all the payouts, as I said at the beginning, they still make a massive profit on the basis of all the fees which traders paid in order to um, take part in those challenges, hoping they're going to get uh, this uh, big trading account with a trading cut. Kasmi has used the proceeds from Traders Global Fraud to fund a luxury lifestyle. Kasmi paid $1.6 million to purchase a Lamborghini Aventar. In December, Kasmi paid $3.3 million for a Bugatti race car. In April, May, Kasmi paid more than $4.9 million towards the purchase of a estate. Ay, 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 ay. 
Traders Global utilizes a third-party advisor to help with the specialized software it uses to control the electronic environment, which its customers trade. The advisor helps Traders Global assesses commissions, impose delay and slippage on customer orders, SDP customers, and artificially widen spreads on SDP customers. The primary point person for communications between Traders Global and the advisor is the head of risk and trading at Traders Global, employee A. Traders, uh, Traders Global Employee A has a stake in Traders Global in the form of profit sharing. So now we're going to see the communication internally of my Forex funds between that Employee A and the other ones and understand that Employee A also wants clients to lose because he has a cut in the profits of the company. Okay. And look what these people say. Shame on you. I need something to stop that money going out. The communications between Traders Global Employee A and the advisor demonstrate how Traders Global loses money when customers make money. On January 22, Traders Global Employee A lamented that a particular customer account appears to be somehow beating our system with ARP, so arbitrage. Traders Global Employee A complained, if the strategy works for a month, we lose more than a million dollars. Although his latest account broke the rules, that's why he has stopped, but we lost about 100K from his trading. And I tell you something, this is not the first time I've come across that kind of situation. Some years ago, I had a friend and he tried also this arbitrage strategy and he had something figured out and worked well. And the same happened. In that case, it was a broker. The broker identified what he did and went after him and uh, kept all his profits and everything. Okay, and we have the same thing going on here. Do not trust any entity in this industry Look what happens internally with them. Shame on you guys. You you should really be ashamed of yourself for engaging in illegal and unethical practices like that. And to go after traders. Employee A complained that during periods of price volatility, customers can make a killing with less probability of breaking the rules. Most of these accounts, the equity is returning to positive heavily and making money and it's resulted in our outgoings rising almost 100%. Damn, yeah, that's a problem, replied the advisor. On June 22, Employee A bemoaned, I have suspended one of these traders for arbitrage and requested he sent the source code of the EA uh, to unsuspend the account. I really need to know what they are doing so I can either ban them or STP them. He got like 100k of pending to withdraw. So I need something to stop that money going out. You understand that? That's dark stuff. That is dark stuff. It's fraud. Okay. And this is ridiculous to ask the client to send the sort goes of the EA. I mean, who, who would do that first of all? And to hold back the profits, you see how unfair they are operating. And uh, I can't wait for a verdict against these people. Seriously, I am so angry right now. I mean, this is like the 2010s all over again. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I didn't expect to read this stuff when I opened that document today. And and I'm still shocked. And uh, really, these, guys, these, these people, they're going to see what they get from, from that fraud. Employee A complained that the advisor was not doing enough to find and eliminate profitable traders. I'm pretty upset because we have so many accounts continuously trading and making huge amounts of money. Guys, these are our people, okay? These are MK traders. They also use platforms. They make money by understanding how the market works. And what do these people do, okay? Rather than supporting them and giving them a chance to continue trading profitably, they work against them. It's just disgusting disgusting we need to name and shame these people we have recorded losses but we aren't picking out these accounts that don't lose hopefully the net is a massive loss communications between traders global employee a and advisor reflect the traders global wants to customer to lose employee a wrote very few customers of ours made money big volume but also big loss Hi, Traders Global Employee A, wrote the advisor. That's great to hear. On May 22, Traders Global Employee wrote, Our traders are getting slaughtered today. Like overall, asked the advisor, or a ton getting shut off from drawdowns, down draws. Both, I think, replied Traders uh, Global Employee A. Nice, wrote the advisor. Oh my God. I have to vomit. I just have to vomit. Slip them to hell. The communications between Traders Global Employees A and the Advisor show how Traders Global uses delay and slippage to limit customers. 
profits. Delay and slippage are applied automatically to customers' accounts through the use of profiles to which customers are assigned. You understand? So they look at all the traders and they assign them different profiles like, you know, rookie and advanced and better. And then they know how they can work against them to make them lose. I mean, you couldn't make this up. Employee A identified a number of accounts using a bot to successfully generate profits. Traders Global Employee A wrote to the advisor, I think we need another profile just for these accounts and just slip them to hell. The advisor subsequently added the requested profile. On April 22, Traders Global Employee A asked the advisor to put a particular customer on an aggressive profile. Traders Global Employee A wrote, these accounts who go up so high so fast please alert us if you see them this guy has done it twice and last time we paid him 120k this guy if he lives he will take out a total of 250k from us has very few losses oh my god oh my god i'm speechless i'm speechless i will go into attack mode uh, really Traders, come on, motivate me to go into attack mode here. This is one of the most disgusting things I've read in the last years. I mean, this is everything I've tried to work against for the last years. This is shameless. On May 22, Traders Global Employee A asked the advisor to put another customer on the aggressive profile. The advisor advised Traders Global Employee A, this has been done. Traders Global Employee A replied, and the account is now dead. <laughs> yeah, gonna see you. Let's see how you will laugh when this investigation resulted in prosecution. Let's see how you laugh. Employee A requests certain accounts trading person to short-term high-frequency trading. As you can see, the advisor wrote, the, the running PL is quite... <coughs> jacked but consistent upwards. The advisor suggested assigning these accounts to profile with a slightly less aggressive slippage setting but would still impede performance. Traders Global Employee A responded, go ahead with that. Communications between Traders Global Employee A and the advisor reflect that Traders Global expects customers to lose money on STP. The performance declines as they get the market experience, wrote the advisor. We recommend keeping the account on the books for now. The new risk profile implemented should alleviate some PL concerns. Oh my god, seriously. Why don't they not expose the names of those people as well? They also need to go to the Hall of Shame. Global uh, Traders Global Employee A complained about a suspicious customer with zero losses. Was that me? <laughs> the advisor explained that the customer's trading was valid and that after taking a review of some of the other trades, it looks more like they are timing the market very well. Traders Global A, will, I will get the scaled account. It will be 100k and we can STP it or start on aggressive and go from there. But I don't know if this will stop them from being profitable. Traders Global, you guys are complete frauds. And I'm gonna drink a sip of coffee to celebrate that this year was exposed. You you changed to the dark side. You should be ashamed of yourself. You guys are scum. I'm sorry, I can't put it any other way. I, I will lose my temper on this video. <laughs> no, this is not funny. Uh, I will lose my temper here. You know, as if the market is not complex enough with all the market manipulation I've exposed, okay? The smart entities doing all their games. As if that is not enough. As if something like trading psychology and discipline and risk management is not complex enough. So like the normal trading as if that's not complex enough for the average person out there. You guys engage in these fraudulent activities from like 10, 15 years ago where they were done by bucket shops, all these small BS broker firms and the regulators went and cleaned them up a bit at least. There's still some around today. And now you have the 
tenacity to do the same thing again in a worse manner with traders out there who have trusted you okay you're gonna see what the consequences of that will be for you it won't be pretty I promise you that some some people will end up in jail here and that's a good thing and we look we who know the forex market we need to speak up okay and that's the reason why I did all these things in the last years. You can't rely on someone else exposing that stuff and, and working against it. We, the ones who have insights and experience with the market, we need to speak up. We need to name these people. We need to work against those people. Only then will things get better. You understand that? Advisor, Tory Traders, Global Employee A. I think we need to, all, I think we need to all subscribe to the concept that our your clients will almost never have alpha. None of them will make money on real market conditions because they are good. Some will because they are lucky. Well, I can tell you something. Causality traders are not lucky. They are just very, very good traders. Kasmi knew during the relevant period that Traders Global was a counterparty to substantially all customer trades. Kasmi executed an agreement dated September 21 with the advisor to lease servers for trading by Trader Global. After talking to Motusa, Traders Global MPA wrote, after talking to Matusa, so cast me, perhaps we should just move anyone who goes above 5% profit to the scalping group we made for more real conditions instead of STPing someone. I like that, replied the advisor. And now let's talk about what the uh, regulator is going to do and what they say in terms of uh, the defendant's uh, wrongdoings okay so making false and misleading statements that customers receive live funds to trade against third-party liquidity providers when in reality traders global is a counterparty to substantially all customer trades b making false and misleading statements that traders global makes money when customers make money and loses money when customers lose money and that your success is our business when in reality traders global loses money when customers make money and employer employees various devices to reduce the likelihood or amount of profitable trading by customers. C. Making false and misleading statements that Traders Global pays a customer a percentage of his or her trading profits when in fact those payments come from fees paid by other customers. D. Making false and misleading statements that the drawdown limit is meant to enforce good trading habits and lock in profits when in reality When in fact the limit is designed to provide Traders Global with a bad faith justification to terminate customer accounts. E. Failing to disclose that commissions are assessed by Traders Global, not a third party liquidity provider, and are intended to reduce customers' account equity. F. Failing to disclose that Traders Global uses specialized software to reduce the likelihood or amount of profitable trading by customers through the application of delay and slippage in an electronic and trading environment that Traders Global controls. G. Failing to disclose that the very small number of customers whose orders are executed against the third party liquidity provider via SDP were expected to and did trade unprofitably or less profitably than when Traders Global was counterparty to those customers. Defendants made these false or misleading statements and omissions to customers in connection with retail foreign transactions. Kasmi was the founder, CEO, and sole shareholder of Traders Global um, throughout the 11th period and during that period possessed and exercised directly or indirectly the power to direct or cause the direction of the management and policies of Traders Global. As such, Kasmi controlled Traders Global during the relevant period. Kasmi did not act in good faith with respect to or knowingly induced directly or indirectly the acts 
and omission constituting traders global violations of the act and regulations. Kasmi is thus liable for traders global's violations of the act and regulations committed during the relevant period, pursuant section etc. Each act of cheating or defrauding or attempting to cheat or defraud any person or of willfully deceiving or attempting to deceive any person by any means whatsoever, including but not limited to those specifically alleged, is alleged as a separate and distinct violation. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Shame on you guys. You, you, your name should not be forgotten. This story should not be forgotten. I'm very confident that they're going to get prosecuted. You can see from the sound of those allegations that the regulators seem to be in possession of some hard evidence. You can see they actually read their internal communications. So they went all the way. They didn't even warn them or tip them off. So they directly froze their accounts. And this is just fraud. It's fraud. It's criminal. Okay. You guys are criminals. That's what you guys are. Shame on you. For giving the forex industry a bad name. For misleading people. For lying. Okay. For having the audacity to sit in these podcasts and and interviews and, and whatnot and, and talk as if you're professional and fair. I mean, what is inside of your head? Did your parents not raise you well? Do you, don't you have any values? You, you want to be the villain of your life story? For what? Just because you want to pocket a dime, is it? That's what you want to do. You can't help it. You get corrupted. You just want more money. You don't care for traders your clients, like it was said in this report, acting in bad faith. That's what it is, okay? Bad faith. Knowing very well how this works and being ice cold, acting against people in the most unfair manner one can imagine. I have to vomit. I have to vomit reading that. And I tell you, you will get your karma. That's how karma works. And I'm telling you, you're going to get a punishment. Of course, I have no idea in terms of maybe, you know, this, this case gets settled by, by paying fines. And, and in the end, who knows what will happen? Will they survive or will they get away with something else? Let's see. I'm going to follow this case. I can tell you that. Let's see what happens in the end. But regardless, if this report by the CFTC is true, or if the majority of those claims are true, then you guys are horrible in every way. And seriously, I, I prefer to trying to be a hero, a good guy in my own life story. Whereas, you know, you guys, you just sell your soul as soon as you can. Shame on you. Sometimes it's better to make less money, okay? Did you ever consider that? Sometimes it's better to be true to yourself, to not engage with other people in, in business just to make a buck, okay? And it's easy to say that, but I have shown you that, I've lived that. Did you ever see any logos on, on my channel? For years I'm doing my work, okay? And I'm leaving a lot of money on the table intentionally because I'm trying to just do the right thing. But to do what you guys did, to, to present yourself to the public like that. And you know, all, and by the way, all of you guys, okay, all of you traders and podcasters sitting around the table and being cool and yeah, man, yeah, talking about your, your trading and, 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 and whatnot. I'm going to come to you guys, I tell you that, because I'm in attack mode now. Stay tuned, guys. I, I will do certain things and in, in the next weeks, you're going to see some very nice videos from my side. I'm going to go for it. I had enough because I also watch YouTube and I see all of you guys talking there and claiming all kinds of things and just selling, you know, uh, brokers and prop firms and 
and stupid trading educators and that by the way that's going to be a big topic i will focus on expect something big from my side regarding that topic okay and it will take a few weeks to prepare i will not just make a quick video i will i will go into detail because i feel that the onus is on me now to do something. I, I thought I can sit here and focus on exposing market manipulation and some other people will take care of other topics. But I can't see much happening in that domain. <laughs> so I'm gladly sitting down now and I will do what needs to be done. And yeah, I have complete clarity now. I, I have in the last days, you know, a few things came to, uh, to my mind and uh, I was like okay that's the way I should follow now because if no one tries to be you know the best person they can be and follow some ethical principles what what do we have then just people trying to cheat each other that's all okay Okay, anyway, so I will post the link to this document. You can read it yourself, okay? Uh, and uh, I, I'm still optimistic overall. I, I even believe that in the long run, once these things are settled, I could imagine that in general, the, this prop uh, business model, it will survive, but it will be conducted in a better manner. It can't be a bonanza like it is right now, okay? These, all these issues have to be sorted. There has to be transparency. Those companies have to disclose how they operate, okay? But in this particular case, uh, it's much worse than just talking about, okay, what, uh, what is the execution of the trades? Is the quality good enough or not? Okay, we're talking about way more things. And I'm telling you, I have come across similar situations before when it comes to brokers, okay? I know a lot of people. I have listened to people talking. I have heard all kinds of horrible uh, statements similar to the ones which were shown in this report okay you can't trust most entities in this business that's how it is okay and um, you need to be selective and let's see can we all do better as an industry can we do better that's a question yeah and th that includes everyone okay people talking about forex Okay, people interviewing traders and all that stuff, everyone. Can we all be better or is this the best we can do? Where, you know, like it just looks at some point that just everybody tries to make money off everybody and nobody has any principles. It can't be. The world can be better than that. All the best. <laughs>